But um, just to get started, y'all, you know, every Wednesday night, I do kind of a relationship 101 with my man, Rich Dollars. And we just talk about men, women, just try to get inside the mind of a man, how men think, kind of raw and uncut, cut, that barbershop talk that women are usually not privy to. And we go into these deep dive conversations. And last week we was just talking about, you know, why men cheat? Is there something that women can do to keep her man from cheating? Is there something a woman can do to keep her man from lying? And, you know, we got all kinds of women hitting us in the comments, hitting us in the chat. And uh, one particular woman, Monice, she just was going ham in the comments. And we got her into the conversation and when we got her in, you know, Monice was talking and she said something interesting that really got me thinking. And she basically was saying like, yo, you know, she made the statement like, look, a man is going to do what a man's going to do. But as long as he don't bring it back here, you know, I'm good. Like, like this is something how women think like, yo, just don't bring your dirt back home. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. And as she was saying that, you know, I challenged her like, yo, this is a little nuts. Like, because when Sean Prez hear that, you just gave me the green light. I just got to be good at what I do. And she was like, nah, I didn't mean it like that. But we are not accepting a man being out there doing what he do, but we expect it. And I was like, hmm, like that's interesting. And even as I left that live, this been with me the whole week since then. Because in real life, in relationships, in business, in your personal life, you accept what you expect. There's this powerful relationship between those two words. And I need y'all to just rock with me for a second. Because in every area of your life, what it is that you expect, you will actually find yourself accepting. And my man who, me and this dude go back 20 plus years, he used to always talk to me. Because both of us was in the industry. This is a dude who's die hard. He gonna be 100 years old, still doing what he do in the music industry. He loves the music industry. And he would talk to me year over year over year about moving to Atlanta. And he would say, yo, you know what, Sean? One day I'm gonna relocate my family and we gonna go down to Atlanta. And he would tell me all of these things that you know, made Atlanta so much better than New York and New Jersey. And then he would send me these real estate clippings and, and links to houses. And he would be like, yo, Sean, take a look at this. A house down there is $250,000. That same house up here is $700,000. You can get a house down there for $500,000. That's a million dollar house up here. And the more he started to sell me on the idea of Atlanta and why he was one day going to relocate his family, it started to occur to me, like, you don't love Atlanta because it's this incredible place and it's got so much opportunities. Like Now, yes, the music industry is popping in Atlanta. Atlanta done put out a ton of successful artists. But at the end of the day, he was selling me on the fact that Atlanta was a good move for him and me because deep in his heart, he never expected to blow the way I expected to blow. He was taking Atlanta as a consolation prize, a just in case I don't blow up. I can go down there and live like a king and I don't necessarily have to make the money to do it like that. And I couldn't understand that frame of mind because for me, I'm all the way in. It's either I'm gonna get to the other end of this rainbow, I'ma go and I'ma touch that pot of gold, or it's nothing, I'ma die trying. 
But for him, he was looking for the way out. And I don't even know if he understood that I would take that $250,000 house down there. I would take that $500,000 house down there because on the surface, it don't make me look like I'm a failure. It don't make me look like I didn't get it all. Like I didn't blow up in the music industry. I can do my IG lives. I can come home to a big house, 4,000 square feet, three, four car garage. And I look the part, but I'm not the part. And he was accepting this reality because he never expected to hit the ball out the park. And this is what I need you movers to think about tonight. Look yourself in the mirror and answer honestly. What are you accepting? Because deep in your heart, you're expecting you to only make it to a certain level. You get what you expect. You accept what you expect. I can look at my life and I look at all of the different inventions and all of the different things that have transpired over the years. And it came from people who didn't take no for an answer. It came from people who said, yo, you know what? The world accepts things as they are. But I expect that I can change the world. Once upon a time, you can go into a town and I was driving down the road the other day and I almost couldn't believe that I'm in a whole different town. And all I had to do was put the address in Google Maps and it got me from the airport to where I was going with no thinking. And I almost couldn't imagine a world without that. But once upon a time when I was coming up, you had to ask people which way to this address. You had to go and download a map but somebody didn't accept the world for what it was and said, I can change it. But they expected something different out their life. What are you expecting? Verse, what you're willing to accept. Uber changed the game. Nobody thought outside the box and said, the taxi industry, it can be changed because for a hundred years, this is the way you got around. You bought yourself a medallion and you were able to drive a taxi. But somebody came in and said, no more. I want to change the game for the better. And because of that, the game has changed. And movers, I need all of us to stop accepting what's before us and expect more from our life. One of the reasons that we don't expect because people tell us, dream, chase your dream, go out there and get it. But truth of the matter is, you can't chase a dream if you don't have one first. You can't go out there and get what it is that you dream about if you first don't expect that it's gonna come true. I was on my man Ed Hennon's lives Last week, and Ed asked me, Sean, what is the common thread that runs between all of the successful people that you've come in contact with? And I told him, yo, Ed, the one thing that every successful person that I've ever spoke to, dealt with, done business with, they all got in common, they never gave up. They never, ever gave up, no matter what it was that life threw at them. They never gave up. But that's only one part of the answer because when we got off the live, I started to think to myself, I said that they never gave up because they wouldn't accept failure. They expected that dream that they had in their head to come true. That was the motivation for them no matter what came, what didn't come, what it was that was the obstacles in their way, the adversities, all of the things that they had to get over, the knockdowns, the beat up, the disappointment, they wouldn't accept it because they expected nothing less than success for themselves. And for everybody out here, yes, you can have this dream, but how can you chase it if 
if you don't really in your heart expect that you're ever going to achieve it. I don't know who y'all pray to. Y'all know I'm a man of faith. And as I sit and I'm thinking and I'm really pondering what I'm going to talk to about tonight, I'm thinking about NASA. And at the top of this year, NASA sent a vehicle to Mars. Now, NASA has the most brilliant minds on planet Earth working for them. And they got one of the fastest vehicles that they've ever built. And they sent it to Mars earlier this year. It took eight months to get there. Eight months. And just thinking about how vast this universe really is. I'm saying to myself, how can we not pray to a God that created Something that it would take the fastest vehicle on planet Earth eight months to get there to. Do you think asking for a million, two million, five million dollars is, is anything more than a drop in a bucket to God? Ask for it and then expect it. Work hard for it and then expect it. If God can make a universe that it takes eight months from a vehicle from earth to get there. You don't think that he can do something as simple as change your life, change your financial situation, make you rich overnight, suddenly. That's nothing for a God like that. I remember my man Kanye West. When he was coming up, how does producer in the game? And all he wanted to be was an artist. Begging, pleading, trying to get somebody to sign him as an artist. And Rockefeller took a chance on him. They signed him, not because they believed in him as an artist, but they didn't want to lose him as a producer. They was willing to take an L on whatever advance they gave him. They was willing to take an L on the records that he was not going to sell. But Kanye West had other plans. He would not accept anything less than success because he expected to be great. And even this past week, when I look at him and he's raising a game to a whole other level, doing two listening parties in Mercedes Benz Arena down in Atlanta, this man put 40,000 people in that stadium at $50 a ticket to do an album listening party. Never in the history of the world has something like that been done by an artist. But for him, he believes in something greater. I don't care if y'all just look at me as a producer. I'm going to show y'all that I'm one of the best people to ever touch the mic. And y'all are going to take me serious in this arena. And then after he did it the first time, he came back and put 47,000 people in Mercedes-Benz Stadium because he would not accept anything less than greatness for himself. And I got to ask you, movers, what are you accepting from yourself? What are you expecting from yourself? One of my guilty pleasures for years is watching Maury. And I almost can't believe that this man been on the air since I've been young. And it never, ever ceases to amaze me how women get up there and they tear these men down. And they talk about he ain't do this for his kid and he ain't do that for his kid. And all they want to hear is Maury say those famous words. You are the father. And when Maury finally says those words, those women get up and they shout and they dance and they sit there and they clapping it up, talking about you're going to step up. But while they were so busy accepting or expecting that that test was going to come back and prove him to be the father, they never sat back and thought to themselves, this dude ain't got nothing to offer my kid. Now I got to accept the fact that he's going to be the father to my child for the next 18 years in this kid's life. This man ain't got a thing to offer. He ain't got to pop the piss in or a window to throw it out. Movers, do inventory on your life. Look yourself in the mirror tonight and ask yourself, 
What is it that I really expect from my life? Am I really in this game to win? Am I really, really putting in this work because I believe that I can do it? Or is it just a matter of you accepting where you're at in the game because you don't expect deep in your heart of hearts that you're ever going to be successful? And if that's the case, I'm telling you now, change that stinking thinking. It could be done. There's no difference between the greats in you except that they will not accept failure from themselves. They expect something more. They expect greatness. They expect that whatever it is that's in here, one day the world is going to see it. It's going to manifest itself tangibly. Can you say the same about your life? So to all my movers, let's keep motivating one another. This is just a quick message I like to get in and out on Monday. You accept what you expect. Stop expecting anything less from yourself, y'all. We got greatness in us. And you can go out there and you can chase this dream. But first, you got to have a dream. And once you have a dream, you got to expect under the worst circumstances, under the worst conditions, that that dream is going to come to pass.